Hey, what it do? <laughs> Share a little bit of my story with you guys. My aunt's a pastor. I grew up in church my whole life and I used to be like, yeah, I believe in God because my dad's a pastor. Like, of course, you know? And then I realized one day that didn't make me anything. Going to church doesn't make you anything. Um, living with parents that are religious doesn't make you anything. It's a it has to be a personal decision to have a personal relationship with Jesus. And that is what makes a real relationship with God. So um, I just wanted to tell you all a little story about how I found God. I'm 29 and when I was 24 years old, I had a dream and it wrecked me and changed my life. Honestly, that was six, no, five years ago. And I'm just now coming back from a really long tumble, fall, stumble. I tumble rumbled <laughs> down the path of unrighteousness and I really got lost. But God found me and <laughs> I'm literally the coin in the Bible who didn't know its value. And a coin doesn't know when it's lost. So maybe one of you watching this could be that coin. Who knows? You don't know your value and you don't know where you belong. Um, Jesus wants you to know that you belong with him and communion with him. That little emptiness, that feeling of just, it's just not enough. Like you can't get high enough. You can't get drunk enough. Um, you can't do enough drugs to make you less drunk, but then try to get drunker enough. Like <clears throat> nothing's ever going to be enough. And I've learned that the hard way. Um, so yeah, Jesus loves you and he's not mean. He's so kind and he's just sitting waiting with open arms for you to, you know, turn around and just be like, Hey, what does it take to get there, to get that relationship with you and show me how to do this because I can't do it. And that's, what's beautiful is you don't have to do this on your own. This is something that Jesus, he, he's so gracious and so merciful. He guides you and you ask him to help you let go of these things you're struggling with and he will, there is grace, but you have to know, you can't think about how am I gonna do that a week from now? You just have to think next time I'm tempted to do this or do that. Just be like, I'm gonna come to God and say, can you take this away? And when you offer that up to him, that's what changes. That's what changes things and helps you grow a relationship with Jesus, y'all. Okay, so let's get to my dream. I had this dream and I wrote it down because it rocked me. It rocked me, it was crazy. Um, I grew up in a church or churches where I don't know, like Jesus was kind of mean and it was kind of like, you know, you messed up so many times and you hated me at times and you yelled at me at times. So yeah, you can't come back. Like you're not welcome here. But, uh, there's stories in the Bible where Jesus talks about having a place at a table. Like he keeps our place at his table, no matter how long we're, you know, away and he'll keep our food warm <laughs> as long as we're willing to put on the white robes of righteousness drop our like things we're trying to hold on to all our all our gunk and all our stuff you could literally just give it to him okay anyway dream time remember so um i had this dream where i'm with two of my sisters i'm one of six i'm with two of my sisters and we're running in the airport we're about to miss our flight and uh we're running as fast as we can and as we're running through the airport there's this guy in a coffee shop and he looks like someone I knew from my past. Like I used to hang out with a bunch of like singers and artists and stuff. And we'd go get backstage passes from this guy. So he like waves me down and he's like, hey, come here, come here. And I like run over to the coffee shop and I'm like, oh my gosh, how are you? Da, 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 da. And then um, he looks at me and he's like, oh my gosh, like I'm so glad you could make it. Like you need to sit down. And I was like, no, 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 I'm about to miss my flight. I gotta go, I gotta go. And he looks at me and he goes, you're already on your flight and the whole coffee shop turned into the inside of a plane and he's trying to like push me and make me sit into this chair and I'm just like, no, oh my gosh, let me go, right? So I get up and I'm like, no, I gotta be with my sister. So I run and I run to my, so I finally, I get to my gate and when I sit down, I'm sitting next to this guy who seems like really angry and he's like saying something under his breath and I was like, what's this guy's deal? And then I look where he's looking and there's a boxer and he's walking in with a whole entourage of friends and people and, and they just seem to like love him and he seems to be so kind he's just like smiling and peaceful and just he's genuinely humble kind you could just see it in the smile and, his, and in his eyes his eyes were so kind and, and he's just like giggling laughing taking photos with people signing autographs like just the kindest guy you've ever seen right <clears throat> then this guy here next to me go i'm gonna kill him and i was like what i was like are you talking about that guy and he was like, yeah, one dead. And I was like, what the heck? Like, why would you, why would you do that? He seems like the most kind person ever. And he said, like, no, I hate him. I hate him. So then he looks over and like does this head nod. And this guy has these green styrofoam boxes and he opens them up and there's like guns. And they start handing them out to people saying, let's go kill him. Let's go kill him. Right? The boxer dude. And I was like, why would y'all want to kill him? Like, that's so ridiculous. Like, you shouldn't want to kill that guy. But 
they did. And so I take off running to tell the boxer, I was like, he needs to know these people are coming to kill him and he's so sweet, he doesn't deserve to die. So I run as fast as I can. I'm running down the little thing, the little tube that leads to the, the plane. <laughs> as soon as I like go through the doors that make the plane, um, the whole scene changes and it's like dust and dirt and like red. And I am looking for the boxer to tell him like, these guys are trying to kill you, they're trying to kill you. And I turn around and I see a cross. And on the cross is the boxer. And he's like unrecognizable from the way he had been whipped. Like his lips were kind of gone. Like, and I like look up at him and I'm like, they're trying to kill you. They're gonna kill you, they're gonna kill you. And he literally looks at me and he smiles. And he says, it's okay. I know. And I was like, what? what? How could you want, like be okay with them wanting to kill you? Like why, they're mean, like they don't deserve that. And he's like, it's okay. He's like, I love them. I was like, what? So I like wake up from that dream. I need to find out if Jesus is real or not. For the first time in my life, like I realized I had no idea who he was. I had never looked into him myself. Um, I bought a Bible and I just started reading, but I, I had to ask God to give me the desire to read it because Lord knows I'd never read a book that long in my life. Longest book I've ever read. <laughs> um, but <clears throat> it was crazy what God brought me through and the healing that he gave me. But what I realized after I read it was that um, Jesus, when he was here on earth, when he walked this earth, he never was unkind. He never put himself first. Like he never condemned people. He's not a, the, Jesus doesn't condemn. Jesus, what he does is he'll convict you. Conviction is, conviction is so much softer and conviction is this beautiful thing where God's like, hey, like we're not doing that, but it's okay that you messed up, you know? But that's not a freedom to, okay, let's go mess up, let's go, because conviction feels good. Like, no, it's, it's knowing that every time you sin, you have to live with those memories and you are giving the devil an open door, a stronghold, like a, a foothold on you to condemn you through your thoughts and drive you crazy and make you feel worthless and that you're never going to be better and that, yeah, maybe you might get a little bit better, but then you're never going to keep getting better. So the devil tries to keep you in this cycle of messing up so that you can never move forward with your life. But when you truly let go and let God have your pain, let God have your money, let God have your addictions, let God have your relationship. When you give him everything, he changes, he changes everything. <laughs> and you have the fruits of the spirit, which is joy and peace and hope. And when the enemy around you, when things like collapse, you ask God to remove something that's not for you and he removes it. And that when it's removed, it causes confusion, y'all. Confusion comes from the enemy, not from Jesus. Where were you in that situation? Because I thought I heard you, but sometimes we do hear our own voice over God's voice in our heads. The enemy comes to condemn and condemnation sounds like and looks like, oh, you did it again. You're an idiot. You're gonna keep doing it. No matter how many times you try, it's gonna keep happening. But what the spirit of Jesus and conviction says is you can do better. You will do better. You will become who I've intended and created for you to become. Okay, I'm gonna pray really quick. Um, dear Jesus, I just ask that you, Touch whoever's watching this video right now, God, that you would meet them where they're at and help them know how loved they are and that there is a reason that this video popped up on their feed. And I just ask that you help them have the best rest of their Sunday today and an amazing week ahead. In your name I pray, amen. Thank you, Jesus.